Today I'd like to show you the lighting setup I used to take this shot of me standing next to the car with the Milky Way in the background. I know, it's another selfie, but there wasn't anyone else around to get in the shot, so sometimes you just have to make do with what's on offer. Anyway, here we are in the beautiful Cairn Reservoir in central Victoria, and I'm going to recreate the scene for you. Well, it is daytime, but apart from that, it's going to be exactly the same setup. So let's have a look. I pretty much always use flash when lighting people in my long exposures because it's impossible to stand still for the full duration of the shot and so when using a continuous light source you will often get blurry images due to movement. I use rear curtain sync to fire my flashes at the end of the exposure. In this case it was a 10 second exposure as I was using the Sigma Art 35 f1.4 lens. I've started using the MagMod series of light modifiers because the umbrellas I've been using in the past often get blown over even in the gentle breeze and I've ruined quite a few along the way. The MagMod system is based on strong magnets inside the attachments which fit together really easily. These MagMods are really quick to set up and give me a few options when it comes to controlling the light. I particularly like the grids as they control the light spill really well. I also like the mag sphere as it softens the light a bit whilst providing a nice even light fall off. So I set up the main light here using a sphere. It's probably about 3 or 4 metres away from the subject and I set the flash power to about halfway. I don't need any fancy features such as TTL or high speed sync and they tend to get knocked around a little bit out here in the wilderness so I leave my more expensive models at home. Once the main light is set up at the front I always place another light behind the subject to provide some hair light and separation from the background. This is a fairly standard practice in portrait lighting and even in daylight shooting you'll see people using the sun as a backlight often. So I attached a grid to this light to help focus the light more on the subject and less on the ground and everywhere else. This light is placed on a low stand about 3 metres behind the subject. Something I added into the mix for this shoot was a continuous light source to give some definition to the right hand rear side of the car. This can be problematic if the spill gets onto the people in the shot, but in this case I made sure there wasn't any light spill. You'll notice in the final shot that the interior light was on also. The interior light was actually only on for about 3 seconds, as I found from experience that any longer than that and it will blow out the highlights. So, we're about ready to go with the shoot. I'm using the Nikon D750 with the Sigma 35mm f1.4 lens and as you can see here it's placed very low to the ground to get the horizon line as low behind the subject as I can. To create the final image I had to take two exposures, one for the foreground and one for the background in the sky. This is due to my desire to have crisp focus right throughout the plane of the shot from front to back this is called focus stacking. Obviously the background image is set to infinity focus. The aperture was set to f2.2 and the shutter speed to 10 seconds. I also set the white balance to 3450K and the ISO was set to 2500. These are very standard settings for me when using the 35mm lens on the full frame D750. Any longer than 10 seconds and I'll be seeing the beginning of star trials which I want to avoid. This shot is taken without any flashes firing as I don't need them for the background. Now I'm ready to take the foreground shot and so I need to refocus onto the front of the car. Because I'm not going to use the background part of this shot containing the stars, I can change my settings considerably. For this shot I set the aperture to f4. This helps me get a sharper image with more in focus. The shutter speed is still 10 seconds, ISO to 1600 and the white balance to 5000K. I changed the white balance because I'm pretty fussy about getting somewhat accurate skin tones on people and this setting makes that easier. I could have gelled my flashes with orange to try to balance this and that's what I might have done if I was shooting an image like this in one shot including both the foreground and the background. Now I turn on the flashes as well as the continuous light, open the door of the car and wait for the interior light to nearly turn off. Then stand very still and press the remote trigger. Now for anyone who's tried to take a shot like this, you'll understand how terribly difficult it is to stand still for the length of time it takes to take this shot. One trick I've learned is to have a point of contact somewhere with a solid object. In this case, I rested my leg against the front of the car. This helps incredibly. 
Also, keeping your feet apart and staggering your legs is a good idea. Remember that I said the flash fired at the end of the exposure? On my camera, this is called rear curtain sync and is enabled in the camera settings. If your camera doesn't let you fire using rear curtain sync, and many don't, then you'll have to revert to a basic manual approach. Simply count to yourself as the shutter is open, and when you're nearly to the end of the exposure, hit the button to trigger the flashes. It works, I've done it many times myself, but you have to be coordinated with hands free to press the remote, which can introduce a little body shake, so be very careful. Okay, so that's how I shot this image here at this wonderful location on a clear night back in March. If you're wondering how I knew where the Milky Way would be in the background to get this shot behind my subject, you'll have to watch my previous video, which I explain how to use the mobile app and the compass to get the bearing on the night sky. Okay, the next step is to get these images into the computer to blend into the final shot. So let's have a look at that process now. Well, here we go. This is uh, Lightroom I've just opened up and I've imported all the photos I took on that particular evening into my um, Lightroom here. Now you can see here that I've highlighted the final image. This is a finished image and I want to show you uh, this is the background image that I took. Uh, and you can see the adjustments I've made to this image over here. Very um, standard adjustments for me. A uh, bit of noise reduction there in the sky. Remember this is a ISO 2500, 35mm f2.2 at 10 seconds. I've added a bit of exposure, dropped the highlights, added a bit of white and a bit of clarity into that image. Uh, I took a number of pictures of the foreground. This is the main one that I wanted to use because I prefer the back lighting on this one. Um, and you may remember that um, I had the continuous light down here on the back of the car, but this particular shot didn't uh, show that very well. There's one back here a bit further that does, this one. Uh, so what I'm going to actually do is blend three pictures here together. Um, but it's the same principle whether you take two, three or ten, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is um, select the three images that I'm going to look at. And then I'm going to go right click on one of them, edit in and open as layers in Photoshop down the bottom here. And uh, that will open those layers in Photoshop and it takes just a few minutes to do that. So we'll just wait for that. Okay, here we go. This is Photoshop opened up. Uh, you can see here. Let me just drag the uh, layers across. Here we go. We can actually see now because I'm using a dual screen monitor, so that doesn't help us when you guys can't see what I'm doing. Uh, let me just get that out of the way so you can see the image. All right, so here we go. Now you'll see the three layers here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is put the uh, background layer on the bottom, so you can see that here. I'm just going to drag it down to the bottom. And then if I turn those two top layers off, you can actually just see right down to the background. So first things first, um, and I'm going to actually reverse the order of these because this one here is the main one I want to use. So I'm just going to turn those two layers off from underneath and just work on this layer here. Now what I'm going to do is um, enable a layer mask. And the layer mask is hiding on the bottom here. Uh, where is it? There it is. So I'm just going to press that, click on there. Now, the thing I'm going to do, re remember, I'm only wanting to use the foreground of this. That's, that's the person here, the ground, and the car. I'm not, I don't want the sky, and I'm simply just going to erase the sky and the lake in the background out of the shot. I'm going to do that by using a layer mask. So on Photoshop, we click over here. You'll see the arrow black and white. Make it black. Go on to a brush tool, which is right over here. And uh, let's see how big will we make that, a bit bigger than that. A soft brush, there it is. Um, and that's at 100%, yep. And I'm just gonna rub out the sky. There are quite a number of ways of selecting uh, backgrounds in Photoshop or items and subjects and things like that. But I, I do it this way because it's quite simple. And uh, I don't like to complicate things. One of my pet sayings is to try to make complicated things simple and a lot of people watching this video will have no idea how to do this and if if I make it look really hard and complex they're just going to turn the video off before I get to the end of it so there's not much point in that so here I am you can see that I'm um, pretty roughly erasing the sky out of this image you can see that there um, 
quite rough. Now, um, for the purpose of this particular video, I don't want to spend too long on this uh, because this can be quite uh, laborious and time consuming. But I want to show you the principle. Now, if I turn the background back on, you can see, except for the this bit around the uh, image, it looks pretty good so far. So I've just got to fix up this black line around the car. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on the image so I can see it a lot closer. And I've got to get all this out of the way so I can actually do that. So let me just move that for a minute. I'm going to make the brush smaller. And I'm simply going to just go around well, it's my head, so I can probably erase my head if I want to. You can see how I'm just rubbing out the background still. I'm still on that layer mask. Now, you're going to ask me probably um, what happens if I make a mistake. For example, what if I go like that? Oh dear, I've rubbed my eye out. All I do is go over here, reverse the color of the, the uh, black to white, and I can paint it back in again. It's one of the magic things about Photoshop it's quite handy so what I'm saying is all of these things that I'm doing here are quite reversible okay so I'm still rubbing out the sky on this image now a lot of people will, who are probably better at Photoshop than I am will say oh why don't you just use a selection tool and quick quick masking tools and things like this um, by all means we can use that but uh, I'm just showing you a really really simple method that I use quite a lot and it gets pretty good results. You just have to be careful around the, around the edges. And you can see what's happening here. I'm just rubbing out the, the background. I've got a soft br brush selected. And, uh, you know, the, the more I want to rub out that background, the smaller I have to get with the brush. And you'll, you'll see in a minute when I go around the, the body. But the, for the purpose of this exercise, I'm showing you the principle of how to do it. And you can see there, that doesn't look too bad, just, just with that pretty rough uh, method that I'm showing you right there. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit closer on the, on the head, because we don't want the head to be surrounded with a shadow like that. So I'm just going to make the brush smaller, and that gives me the opportunity to get it right in and around like that. Remember, it's a soft brush. So... It, it, it just has soft edges, okay? And you can see there, I'm slowly getting rid of all the black outline. Like I said, if I go too far, I can just get it back by um, reversing the, the color from black to white, which is a fantastic um, thing that you can do. I love it. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'll just move down the down here a little bit and over here a little bit, like so. All right, here we go. Now I'll just go across to the top of the car, go around there. There's a there's a bit of a black edge on the car anyway, because um, the light didn't hit the top of the car that well because it was a fair way from the top of the car so that's just the mirror there and you can see up here where uh, the uh, yeah the edges is, is quite dark anyway now let me just get this out of the way i'll get it right out of the way so you don't have to worry about that and i'm still using a fairly small brush here to rub out bits of the car that i um that i need to you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. When I'm operating close to the car like this, I have to be quite delicate with the size of the brush. But when I get away from the car, I can be a bit, bit more liberal with the brush size. Okay, so I'll just go down the back of the car here like so. And you can see how this horizon there has suddenly been revealed because I'm rubbing out the background. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to make that a bit bigger so we can see a bit more of the image now. And I'm going to make the brush bigger. I don't want to waste all of our time doing this, so 
bit there I missed. Oh, I missed, missed out on the lake over here, so I must apologise for that. Probably missed the, yep, that's a bit delicate, that, that operation there, so we'll just take that easy. Okay. There we go. Now, if I want to see if I've missed anything, all I've got to do is turn the bottom layer off, and you can see, see that? You can see the bits that you've missed. So, there we go. Turn it back on again. Whoops, turn it back on again. And there's two images blended together very roughly. If, if I had, I'd have um, a bit more, if I spent a bit more time on this, it would look better. But uh, hey, I don't want to waste your time tonight. So uh, let's just... Look at that, yep. Now, the back of the car here. I'd be happy with this normally, except that the back of the car, I put a light there and it was just, for this particular shot, it wasn't bright enough. So what I'm going to do is enable, and let me just go show you this again, the three layers. I'm gonna enable the second layer. Now when I enable the second layer, you can see through what I've already got rid of in the first layer. And there's a bit of ghosting on the, on the body here because of that. So I'm just gonna turn those other two layers off for a minute and select that layer and put another layer mask on it. Now for this time I'm going to rub out nearly everything except the back of the car. So just this is a very very big global adjustment. I'm going to rub out pretty much all all of this. Pretty much. Including most of the car except the back of the car. So this is pretty easy to do big brush rubbing out pretty much the whole image except the back of the car okay so once again when i get down near near the bottom of the image i'm going to be a bit more delicate with my brush um, now, if I turn all of these back on, uh, we've got a bit of a problem there because I've got to rub out the, the, on the top layer, I've got to rub out this bit. See that? So I'm just going to include a bit more there. And see how it's enabling what's underneath the car to show through. A bit more ground there, a little bit more of the front wheel. That's not too bad. Um, Oops, that wasn't good, I'll get rid of that, because I've got to make sure I actually do it on the, on the um, layer mask, not on the actual layer itself. These are some of the traps that you can fall into when you're doing this sort of stuff. So I'm just going to get rid of that again, so we can see the back of the car and the sky. So we're just blending it in, see that? Quite quite simple blending. I'm just going to move this out of the way so you can see the car a bit better. Okay, make it bigger again. And suddenly, there you go. There's an image. Uh, like I said to you at the beginning, I could spend a lot more time going around the, the body here, fixing up some of these bits in here that I know aren't quite perfect. But this is just a, an exercise to show you guys how I do the image. Um, and so there you go, that's what it looks like and that's the, that's the process. So just to reiterate, there's three layers, background layer, so I'll turn the top two off, there's the background layer and I'm just adding that side of the car and then that side of the car, all blended together using layer masks in Photoshop. So when I'm finished with this, I cross out of the image at the top here, save changes to the Adobe document and I say uh, yes and that will go straight back into Lightroom. And when it comes back into Lightroom, it'll be there in a minute. There we have it. There's our final image, which we've already seen. And I've showed you already what that looks like. And yeah, that's how we do it. Okay, well, that's the process from start to finish on how I achieved this shot. Whilst I was there, I put together this little time lapse to show you what it was like on the night. 
I look forward to hearing from you guys to see how you go shooting your night shots and I'd love you to make contact. I'm always happy to chat. Okay, well I'll see you next time.